Good morning. Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at market site is Bob Yager, who's a senior energy analyst over at Mizuho Americas, and we're here for our energy checkup. Bob, just a few weeks ago, oil was sitting at multi-year highs. Now we have you come back in a few weeks later, and uh, quite the sell-off going on in the oil complex. Yes, yeah, so all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, there's all this crude oil available that wasn't available two, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, yes, a couple things have changed uh, dramatically, uh, really. Uh, for starters, President Trump had been on the OPEC folks about we, we need, the global economy needs more barrels. And the Saudis had done all they could to a certain degree to uh, try and accommodate him on that. Over the weekend right now, the, uh, they started offering barrels into the spot market, basically. So they have contractual barrels that they need to sell to their customers. They started offering above and beyond that. So that adds barrels to the mix. Right. Um, also... Uh, as I just got here, the Treasury Secretary, uh, the Treasury just said that the importers of Iranian crude have a good chance of uh, receiving waivers. So those are barrels that you thought would go off the market because of Iran, might not be the case. And then also, President Trump has been, uh, or people in the administration have been uh, kind of chatting about uh, releasing barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve here in the United States. There's 660 million barrels sitting in salt ca caves down by the uh, Gulf Coast where the vast majority of U.S. refiners are at. And those barrels may be coming to the market, so at least some part of those barrels may be coming to market. That's a big development also. But, but why add all the supply into the market? Was it because gasoline prices were getting too high? <laughs> so it's more, of, it's more of like an economic optics thing in my mind because you didn't need that. Well, Supply that's economic optics as gasoline gets close to $3, but right. we are also getting close to the midterm elections, too. So, right, so nobody wants to hear oil at $80 yes. a barrel. If you're on the fence, whether it's going to be a Democrat or Republican, and gasoline is trading three fifty dollars at the pump at least, and you can't afford it, who are you going to blame it on? Of course. Income. All right, so what about um, demand? Has the, has the demand fundamental shifted at all dramatically? Demand has not been rip-roaring here. Um, that the best measurement for that is the gasoline crack. That's how much you send a barrel of gasoline, or uh, crude oil through the refinery. It comes out as a barrel of gasoline. That price has been sliding pretty good for the last couple of weeks. There was a bit of recovery last week as, uh, as crude oil got cheaper. Um, but today it's under pressure again. So where do you think we stay for the remainder of the summer? I think we're going to bottom out someplace around $65, about $3.50 lower than we are right now. It's not too much further. It will be an oversold territory against those numbers. Um, there's, other in there's other issues out there that will tend to support the market eventually, but I do think we have a little bit more to slide here. Well, it'll be interesting to see energy earnings for Q2 because you did have a 14% run from April to June in, in crude oil prices, so the expectation would be <laughs> Q2 earnings. Things will we'll do be pretty well, good. Yes, right? That's correct. So, and then, so I guess what we'll be listening for is an analyst, what they have to say going forward. So, really, the catalysts are forward guidance and then what happens with the midterm election, I would imagine. That's correct, yes. All right. Well, thank you very much, Bob, for joining us as always at MarketSite. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ.